guys! Lori here. I'm back to start a new reading vlog. Today is January 6th, um, so we're going into the second week of January, and I'm actually super excited for all the books that I hope to read this week. I am in the process of listening to Thorn of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. Um, I'm on about chapter 6 of that. Last month I did re-experience re um, The Assassin's Blade, which I really enjoyed. I'm reading this for the Time Warp YA Book Club, and I'm going to hope to read this majority of this week or listen to it a majority of this week um most of my podcasts are on hiatus um until they choose their next show or if they come back so that means I will have a lot of listening time and I'm also reading um The Burning Maze um by Rick Riordan this is the third book in his Apollo series and I'm just I just got up to page 108 in it I'm really loving being back in this world I said this before Percy Jackson is probably one of my favorite narrators in that series like in that world but I'm really growing to like Apollo. I think his character and how he is just, um, his, his narrator voice is just so fun and heartbreaking. And I'm really curious to see what happens in this book. So we got an older character back. Um, if you've read the older series, we got Grover back. That was a massive reveal at the end of the last book. Um, but I'm just liking it. I'm really loving the dynamic between Meg and Apollo in this book I think that it's just really interesting and you get dunked in so much mythology which I'm really enjoying this also goes for one of the books in the pop sugar reading challenge which is um read a book about mythology which is like Greek and Roman mythology and there has been a couple of more name drops um and I'm really excited to see what characters we see next because the Rick Riordan world is so big there's like 20 to 25 characters that you've met in all of these series, and I love just seeing them pop up. Um, and I know that from everyone that I've heard that has read this book, this book is like an emotional gut punch. So right now it hasn't emotionally gut punched me yet. I'm really curious to see what happens. I know a lot of people said that this book was a real game changer, so I'll be curious to see how I feel. And I have a kid in my class that he he he's read it so when I'm done hopefully I will get to read discuss it with him um but yeah I will check back in when I make some more progress and I'll talk to you guys later bye hi guys Lori here I am checking back in it is about seven o'clock on Monday um November 7th I did also realize that today is the powder books readathon not quite sure if I'm actually going to participate. I have, I will definitely be reading all week, but I'm not making a TBR or anything just because this week is chaos with my auditions and stuff like that. So I'm probably not going to make a TBR, but I am, I'll say I'm following it more than I would other weeks. Like I'm going to try to read more than I normally do. And I actually did have a pretty okay reading day. Um, I read about four more chapters of Thorn of Glass by Sarah J. Moss and I really got no reading done with Rick Ryder and I read about maybe like 10 more pages. I'm gonna try to tackle this more tonight, but I did get a package in the mail and it is the Owl Crate Wicked King box. I'm so excited for this box. I like was very excited. Um, so yeah, let's dive into it. This packaging is so pretty by the way. Like this box is gorgeous. I love this box. This is their special edition box for Wicked King by Holly Black. I actually already read this book, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I really hope I like the box. Um, I'm not going to do spoilers. This is the card, which will become a new bookmark for me. Um, the first thing that I am seeing, ooh, ooh, is this another wall hanging? I'm going to see what this is. Okay, ooh, I don't know what this is. What is this? What is this? Ooh, my goodness, it's a scarf. Oh, yay. I don't even know what it looks like because, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. Oh, I'm gonna have to take a picture and put it on my Instagram probably towards the end of the month because I don't want to spoil anyone. But oh my god, that is so pretty. Oh my god, that is gorgeous. I really am going to start wearing more scarves and this one will be awesome. Oh my god, I love it. That's like so pretty. Um, the next thing that I see is a candle from Alchemy and called the High King. It smells like oak wood and moss leather. Ooh, that is so pretty. Ooh, and this candle is huge, let me say. This is such a huge candle. This will be great in my pictures. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Um, another thing that I'm seeing, ooh, is a little box that has an Owl Creek symbol on it. Ooh, and it has an acorn. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh, 
this is so pretty. I am putting this on. This is gorgeous. This is like a little acorn. Oh my god, I love this. This is awesome. I'm going to put this on immediately. Oh my god, this necklace looks so cool. Oh my god, I'm so excited. This is like such a pretty made necklace as well. Um, but yeah, I will keep this in the box right now because I don't want to ruin it. Um, but I will definitely be adding this to my necklace collection that I'm going to wear. And this one looks really like adorable as well. Sometimes when you guys have in book boxes, um, it's not super adorable. But this was actually really nice. And I'll try to, closer to the end of the month, I'll try to take like this for you guys. Um, um, I also see Frock and Fruit Cranberry and Abilene Tea Shop. So you have some tea, which is really nice. Um, another thing that I'm seeing... Ooh, is the Owl Crate limited edition pin, and it is so pretty. This is such a pretty pin. Um, yeah, that's gorgeous. That's so pretty. Um, I also see. Oh, yay! We got the pre-order pin from Novel Ink as well, which is strike and strike and strike and strike and strike. If it's war she wants, it's war we'll give her. And I think that this was the pre-order one from Novel. I'm not sure. It might be a little bit different. I never did wind up submitting my pre-order stuff for it. Um, ooh, and this is Under the Sea Crystal Soap, an Owl Crate exclusive. This is pretty, though. This is, like, gorgeous. This is just soap. And I'll probably eventually wind up taking it out of the packaging. But that's really, really nice. Um, oh, and can I see? Oh, yes! Yay, 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 yay. I love these bags so much, and I've actually found, like, so many uses for them. Um, instead of being afraid, I could do, I could become something to bear. Instead of being, I could become something to bear. That is awesome. I love these pouches. They're so well made. I have, like, four of them at this point, and I use them for so many different things at work. So this is going to be another one that I'm going to add to my work collection, which I'm a teacher, so I can always find uses for them basically which is nice um but oh, i hope this doesn't all right i'll play with that later i don't want to ruin it all right i'll play with that later oh and we have when his blood falls things grow um a for all forests are magic um, and we also do have a print, which is this. This print is also really, really pretty, and this is probably Jude and Carden. Ooh, <laughs> and this book matches perfectly to the other one, and I even like this cover, um, which is awesome. I wasn't the biggest fan of the original Wicked King one, but I do love this king, this one. I might actually want to keep in this edition, to be super honest with you. Um, because I wasn't planning on it, but I really do like it. It's just so, so pretty. Um, so yeah, that is my Wicked King unboxing. I am still getting the Owl Crate, the, not the, um, the Barnes & Noble exclusive because that will match perfectly with my original collection. But yeah, that is my Wicked King Owl Crate unboxing for you guys. I am, I really like these boxes. I really am always so sad when I can't get them for various reasons. Um, like if I already have the book or stuff like that, but I actually really thought this box was so well put together and I just wanted to check in about my reading as well. And I will try to check in more tomorrow when I come home. I do have auditions tomorrow, so I hope I can actually even maybe read a little bit more than I did today, but I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, Lori here. I'm just checking back in. Today has not been a good day for reading for me, but I had a very good success in casting at least part of my show, so that was good. I'm still on page um, 167 of The Burning Maze, um, but yeah, I hope to actually get some reading done tonight. Um, but yeah, I will hopefully check back in tomorrow, but this week is a little bit crazy with the show that I'm trying to cast, so I'll try to check in maybe before I go to bed, but I can't make any promises, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi guys, Lori here. I'm just checking back in. Yesterday was my second day of auditions um, for my show, which went okay. Um, but then I got like 
lost on my train and I went toward a long stop, so I got back there a little bit later than I had originally planned. I have been doing a little bit of reading, but honestly, all of my prep periods have been prepping for my auditions and for my callbacks, so I really haven't had a whole time to read, honestly. But I did actually make some more progress on the train ride home today, and I read to page 258. This read is definitely going a little bit slower, but I'm really liking this book. It's definitely a series, so I kind of can just fall back into it. Jason and Piper have made an appearance in this book, and I'm really curious to see what happens to them. I love when every book we get like a cameo with like a different former um, Lost Heroes characters or the Heroes of Olympus characters. So I'm really liking that. Um, I'm hoping to. I'm. 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 I'm also in the middle of watching Runaways, the show on Hulu. Um, so I really hope to catch up on that as well and read a little bit more tonight. Um, yeah. So I will try to check in before I go to bed. It just depends on how much I actually accomplish. But I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi guys, Lori here. Sorry, I kind of failed vlogging this week. Um, it's just been a really busy week. As I said at the start of this video, I had auditions for my show and I really spent a lot of this week kind of organizing everything for that. Um, I mostly cast, um, I doubt none of my students will ever watch this, but in case they do, I don't want to spoil who actually got the lead roles. Um, but I did wind up finishing The Burning Maze by Rick Riordan. People... We need to chat. I really thoroughly enjoyed this book, and it, it's definitely took the characters in a really unique direction. I'm, I'm still like, I'm still like, um, I'm still processing this book. This book really was a big game changer, um, and it really like tugged at your emotional heart in this whole series. It just really was a shocker, and. Um, yeah, I don't want to get to, I don't want to do, talk spoilers. If you do want spoiler review, just let me know and I'll happily do it because this is like the third book in a series, so I don't want to say too much. Just know that it definitely made me, it definitely like hit me in the emotions. It definitely was a game changer. It definitely took Apollo in a really interesting direction and I loved the cameos that we got and where we're going next. I'm really kind of sad because this the next book doesn't come out until the fall of 2019, which is a kind of a bummer because I have to wait a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I actually am really, I, I really enjoyed this book. Definitely gave it five stars. I found it to be super compelling. And yeah, so that's what I just finished reading. I've, I've also been listening to um, Thorn of Glass and I literally just started the resolutions by Mia Garcia that I just got from my library. Um, I literally just started it, so I'm probably going to do some vlogging, and then I'm going to come back once I, ch once I read a little bit so I can check back in. But yeah, that's what I've been doing, so I'll ch talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, it's Lori here. I just realized that I wanted to film this, and I just did not feel like uh, getting up. Um, so I actually made a lot more progress on Thunder Blast by Sarah J. Moss. I think I'm on page in chapter, like, 30 in that, which is actually pretty good for that audiobook. Um, and I am now on page 190 in the resolutions. And I want to just give you guys a brief summary about this book. It basically follows four characters. Um, it is three boys, um, three girls and a boy, Jess, Lee, Ryan, and Nora. Um, and they are in their junior year in high school, in high school. Um, and they have this tradition where they make New Year's resolutions every year, which many of us do. Um, have you seen my bookish resolutions video? I also have personal resolutions video that I make every single year. Last year, they were not that successful in tackling their resolutions, so they kind of changed the game a little bit, and they decided that they were going to make resolutions for each other. Um, and this book, I think, takes place over the course of, like, a whole year. So we're right in the middle of the spring, and I'm really liking it. It's very diverse so far. There is an LGBTQ character. There is, actually, there's two. There's two LGBTQ characters, which I actually think is really interesting. There's a, lot, there's a lot of diversity in this story. The friendship dynamics are really interesting, and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope to tackle a little bit more today. I'm also listening to Sarah Bird, well, watching Sarah Burgess is a Loser um, on Netflix, which stars Noah Centio and Bar the girl that plays Barb in Stranger Things. So I'm watching that. Hope I get to read a little bit more of this later, and I'll check back in when I do. Hi guys, Lori here. I'm back. Um, this video is a little bit later than normal. Um, I had to stay later at work today, but that's okay. It was fun. Um, I actually did make a lot more progress on um, 
the resolutions by Mia Garcia. I'm now on page 174 and I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking how this book definitely takes place over like a year, which I you don't normally see in YA contemporaries. Normally you see them over the course of like two to three weeks or like a summer, but this book takes place over a whole year and I'm really liking seeing how these characters grow. Another thing that's super interesting about this book is that it's definitely set in let in like Latina culture latina culture all the characters are latina and they're all so different and i'm really liking that um you also have a lot of them using language like you know spanish and i personally don't understand spanish but they do it in a way where like you they they use it and they really don't explain it but you could still kind of understand which i think is kind of a unique way because I feel like I'm missing stuff but I'm okay with that if that makes sense I don't know if that makes any sense um but I'm actually really liking it I'm really liking Ryan as an as the as one of the characters um he's a um a gay man and it's just a really interesting story I'm, I'm hoping to tackle a little bit more tonight I would love to finish this tomorrow I don't think that that's doable but I'm actually I am making some progress um so yeah I might check in before I go to bed, um, but yeah, I will definitely talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys, Lori here. Sorry for my messy hair. Uh, I had picture day today, so my hair was all curly. Um, but yeah, so I'm checking back in. I'm now on page 240 of The Resolutions by Mia Garcia. I'm really liking this book. I'm loving the such different perspectives that we're getting between Jess, um, Jess, Nora, Lee, and Ryan. They're so different and I'm really loving the aspect of Latina culture that's hidden through all the stories. I'm loving how this book is pro progressing over the year. I'm just really enjoying it. Um, I'm having, it's definitely like a, like a, not as like emotional, a heartbreaking book as like a Katie McGarry book, but it does have a little bit more like heart to it. It kind of reminds me of The Unlikelies by Carrie Firestone. Like, Still, like, a really compelling read, but definitely has some fun moments. But all these characters are dealing with much, like, more, like, deeper or harder issues, like, you know, self-discovery or what they want to do with the rest of their life. So it's really interesting, and I'm really liking it. I hope to dive back in and maybe read a 100 more pages tonight. But, yeah, I will let you guys know. I'm so far behind on booktube videos um, that people other people make, so I want to try to catch up while I'm reading. Um, but, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, Lori here. I'm back. It is Wednesday and I just got home from work and I did wind up finishing the resolutions on the trade ride home by Mia Garcia. I really like this book. I thought this book was so well done. I thought I love how the book was set over a year. The book definitely did break down these characters by the end and I love the turning point of this book. I thought it was actually really realistic. Um, It was just a, such an interesting read. I was really invested in all the characters and I like how this book really looked how the different ways a character could be broken. Not everyone was broken in the same way, but they all were broken. They all had their own issues that they were dealing with. And I thought that, that, I thought that their relationship to Latina culture was also really interesting, or Latino culture, like that culture, was really interesting. I love the presence of Spanish in this book. It really opened my eyes to that culture a little bit um and I work with a lot of Spanish kids in my schools and it just was an interesting look into their family lives and maybe what my students are dealing with on a daily basis um but yeah I actually really liked it I've um I, I read the last 200 pages on my to and from work and I really enjoyed it I will definitely be reading more by Mia Garcia in the future um and I just did pick my next book which will be Girls with Paper and Fire by Natasha Yining. This was a former Owl Crate book that I did not wind up getting from Owl Crate, um, but I do have a couple of copies. So probably when I'm done with this, I might actually wind up doing a giveaway. I did just reach um, 237 or 36 followers now. So I think what I'll do is when I'm done with this, I'll probably give this book away to you guys. So keep a nose out for that. Um, but yeah, I'm about to start reading this. And if I make any severe progress, I will check in before I go to bed tonight. And I'll talk to you guys later. Hey, it's Lori here. Sorry, I've been, I've gotten, a, it was, I've, I've been a little bit sick this week. The kids must have had some colds and it's passed to me. Um, so I didn't update yesterday. Apologies about that. It was also my first day of technical, like, of my theater rehearsals. Um, it was just a little bit chaos. But I did get my owl crate for the month of January and I wanted to include that in this video. 
Um, yeah, so let's get into it. I'm 95% sure that I do know the book. I didn't think I knew the book, but I'm pretty sure I know the book. Um, and I actually, I think it's artifacts. I think that's the theme, but I could be wrong. So this video will also have the previous clip was the Wicked King box. Um, but yeah, this is magical artifacts. Ooh, this is such a pretty card too. And I have no idea what the items are because I totally forgot. Um, but yeah, the first thing I'm seeing, ooh, and they have changed and they're not doing, um, like buttons anymore. They're doing enamel pins which is awesome and it says Wol wolves were everywhere and that's really really cool so i'm excited to put this on my collection with all my buttons that i have from this company Ooh, and master of death socks oh my god deathly hollow socks oh my god this is so exciting i am totally wearing these this week this is so awesome. Oh my god, they're Master of Death Socks. Oh, this is awesome. I love these. These are going to be my new item to wear. I'm so excited. Um, okay, the next thing I spy, ooh, is something jewelry related. Ooh. Ooh. I think this is a bracelet. Let me look. I'll also tell you, I always forget to like, ooh, this is pretty pretty let me see if this i think this is a bracelet if i can do it right yeah i think this is a bracelet yeah it goes on oh and you can make it shorter oh it fits nicely and it's all like um leaves which is pretty i'll take it off so i can show you guys but it's like little like leaves and i'll probably put it on this wrist because this wrist has less things on it um but yeah that's pretty. And I actually really, really like bracelets like that because you can make them any size you want. And I have really small wrists. So, that is gorgeous. I hate, I don't hate, but I, like, this stuff is always so annoying to me. Um, ooh, I see something else. What is this? <gasps> ooh, another pouch. Ooh, I'm excited. I like these. Um, I actually use these for, like, a lot of things at school because I have a lot of, like, things I use them for. Um, um, so this is another one. This is as travelers to travel. Ooh, this is pretty. Kill war every peculiar coat. Um, okay, I think this is from the Darker Shade of Magic. It's very pretty, though. So, that's very, very pretty. Um, ooh, another thing I'm seeing. Ooh, a bookmark. Owl Crate Exclusive Sting Sword. Steeth Sting is an ancient elvish blade where orcs or goblins are near. The blade allows blue alternates wilder and the others who had engraved with the silent text translate I am the spider bang. Also works great as a leather op a leather a leather opener. Like a letter opener. Um but that is so cool. You could also even use it as like a bookmark too. Um but that is awesome. That is so cool, and it's really, really sharp, so you could probably use it, like, as a letter opener, but it's wood, and it's designed. That is really cool. I would actually probably put this on my desk at work, because we do get sometimes get letters, but that's actually so awesome. I love that. I will probably keep that in this packaging, because I don't want to ruin it or lose it, but that is really, really cool. Um, the next thing I see, ooh, what's this? Oh, I think this is a pillowcase. Oh, maybe not. No, no, no. What is this? This is ah. Oh, without shores, we wouldn't be human. Be uh. Without stories, we wouldn't be hum human beings at all. By Philip Pullman. And I'm probably going to probably bring this to work and put it on one of my walls because I do have some wall space. So I'm probably gonna bring that to work. But that's another tapestry. My huge one is currently at my job right now, and the kids love it. Ooh, and a um, passport thing, a, uh, to go, like, whenever we go on a venturing, um, and it has, like, the Paris on the front, and it's the Gilded Wolf, which is right, I did, I, I, I do know the book. Ooh, this cover is pretty. If I can get this book out to show you, that'd be lovely. Ah. 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 Alright, hold on. Sorry, this book does not want to come out of the package. Hold on, sorry. Out, um, make it work. Okay, but I was 
All right. Ooh, this cover is gorgeous. So pretty. Um, but it is the will the will the, um the gilded wills by Ronnie Chosky, and I actually haven't read anything by Ronnie Chosky. Um, and I don't even know what much what this book was about, but I know that Super Space Check was super excited about this book. This cover is like indented. It is signed by the author, and I'm gonna look up the summary for you guys as well. Um, but let's see. Um. And this is the, the, the book that we get every month. Um, Roni Chashki, Stella Bookart. Um, and then it has the Babel. Oh, and then Whimsical Bee. Celebrate all of the magical creatures you wish existed in real life. Or do they already? Our February pack is packed with whimsy and fun. Our book pick is a fast-paced story about a young girl determined to join the ranks of soldiers who train and fly phoenixes into battle. It's also a book that takes a cute look at the conflict between sisters. We are truly captivated by it. The book will be Alcor exclusive edition that will have sprayed edges that will be signed by the author. It's so beautiful. There will be super cool items inspired by Harry Potter, Spirit Away, Peter Pan, and much more. We're also very excited to reveal that there will be an exclusive item designed by Four Season Fox in every box. So, that means I do actually have this book, but I haven't read it yet. And I love books with sprayed pages, so I'm probably going to add that book to my collection. Um to give to my students because they've been loving any books that I give them um but yeah I'm re I really I love I, I love oh, okay books so books so much um but yeah let me just go over where everything came from um yeah so we have um are you a fan of the darkling amplify your grisha power by wearing your new antar bracelet oh this is from shadow and bone um, Fend Off Your Ambushing Spire with a, with a Letter Opener by Juniper and Arby Designs. Um, Harry Potter Socks. Um, Stella Book Art was the Darker Shade of Magic Toast. Um, a Wall Tapestry from the Golden Compass. And Gilded Wills. And the pins connect back to the book. So yeah, I'm so excited about all this stuff. I think the highlights was definitely the socks and my tapestry collection. Because now I actually have wall space to put them. Yeah, and I think my kids will love that book, so I will definitely not add it to my reading list. Um, but yeah, this cover is so pretty. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add this into this video, and then I'm going to come back and update you guys on my reading, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, Zlora here. Um, when I was putting away all of my stuff from my owl crates, I finally found my Deathly Hallows necklace, which I really thought that I lost. So I'm so happy that it actually turned up because I love this necklace and the kids are wondering where what happened to it. Um, so I did actually make some more progress on Girls in Paper and Fire. I'm now on page 103. She is finally into the court. She has finally met the king. Um, and that's my part that I got up to. This book is really easy to read. This was a former Alicrate pick for the month of November. I didn't actually get this box, so I still have an arc of this. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really liking it. I'm liking the character. I don't feel as connected to her as I want to. Um, but I'm hoping that that changes the further I get into this book. Um, I'm definitely going to read a lot more tonight. I just have to do some grading stuff tonight because I have off on Monday for the holiday and I want to like have all my grading stuff done so I can actually enjoy my break. Um, but I will definitely check back in when I start reading. Bye. Here I'm back. Sorry my voice sounds a little bit um, sore. I've been battling a small cold the past couple of days. But it is about nine o'clock and I did make it up to page 169 of Girls in Paper and Fire by Natasha Ning. I think that's how you say her name. This book is super interesting. It has elements of the glittering court of the selection series and um I haven't read it yet but it's the series by um Renee Adier um which is on my shelf. I just haven't read that book yet but it definitely has elements. The one thing I really like about the character of Lei definitely is like a very like um um, diverse, like, it's set in, like, a China, Japanese, like, Asian society, um, and it has, like, a thousand and one nights vibes, but the one thing I'm loving is the character Lei and her journey. Normally, when you read books like this, there is an immediate, um, connection between her and the male lead, um, and it normally can often become, like, a little bit, um, predictable, but I'm loving her journey in this story, and I'm really loving the other girls. I'm loving the world in this society. It's really, really cool. I don't think I've ever actually explained what this book's about. But it basically follows this girl, and in this society, there are different, like, smaller, like, environments that they live in. 
Um, and every year, ten concubines or paper girls are chosen, and they basically have relations with the king. Um, and she is unexpectedly chosen because she has really pretty eyes. And we're, right now we're at the part where she's being trained to be a concubine, a concubine basically. And something just happened, and it's really interesting. There's like elements of like an LGBTQ romance in this story that I'm really liking. Um, you know, there, it does have harder topics like rape, which, um, just as a note, does have topics like that. Um, but so far I'm really liking it and I'm loving the world. I think the world is the highlight and I'm really enjoying it. So I will hopefully try to check it before I go to bed. This is definitely like, now that I'm actually sitting down and reading it, it's becoming a faster paced read than I originally thought, but I'm really liking it. So I'll check back in later. Bye. Hey guys, Lori here. I'm just checking back in and I'm actually going to end this reading vlog because tomorrow is hopefully going to be a very, very big snow day. Um, and I wanted to start a new reading vlog and this vlog has hit about 30 minutes. So I'm actually okay ending this vlog now. I did actually just finish reading Thorn of Glass while listening to Thorn of Glass by Sarah J. Moss, which is super exciting. <coughs> Sorry, I've come down with a touch of a cold. Um, which is actually perfect timing because I have off Monday, so hopefully I'm better by Monday because Tuesday I start doing prep for my show, well, real, real rehearsals. Um, I just spent the whole afternoon um, making my rehearsal schedule for those, some of you on this channel, so you guys are interested in hearing about that process, so here it is. And I have a tendency when I do major projects like that, that I do one round of it, I don't like what I do, and then I go back and I redo the whole thing, so that's basically what I did. I did one whole schedule. And then I went back and I redid the whole schedule. So I have about a rehearsal schedule up until about February, which is actually pretty exciting. Hopefully I'm able to stick to it. Um, but yeah, I did finish Thorn of Glass and I'm now on page 212 of Paper Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Ning. Um, I'm really liking it. I'm thinking she's definitely a different type of heroine, which I'm really enjoying. There is definitely LGBTQ undertones in this novel which I'm really liking. Um, but yeah, I'm going to shut this vlog down and I will start a new one for tomorrow. But thank you guys for sticking with me. This video did include two unboxings and my reading adventures. Um, I know next week's reading vlog will probably have my adventure to go to the Epic Reads meetup and I will try to remember to bring the camera. But you will see me tomorrow, hopefully with some snowball. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.